Welcome to this month's market update. I'm Damon Greywall. Uh, I'd like to begin today by acknowledging the Gadigal people, uh, the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet and record today. I'd like to pay my respects to elders past and present. I'm joined today by Shahana Mukherjee, Senior Consultant from our Capital Markets team. How are you, Shahana? I'm doing well, Damon. How are you? Well, thank you. And um, yeah, as, as we look back on 2023, we witness human catastrophe turn into broadened conflict in the Middle East uh, and now heightened risks for shipping in the Red Sea. Um, market focus on geopolitical risks remained staunchly entrenched for the year. Uh, a somewhat fever pitch, you could even say. But regardless, markets seem to finish quite strong. Can you talk us through some of the key developments for 2023, Shahan? Certainly, Damon. Now, 2023 was an important year for financial markets. Inflation and interest rates continue to be the focus. Um, we did see inflation rise quite significantly, particularly through the second half of 2022. And inflation peaked at rates not seen in several years, particularly in some of the largest economies. Now, most central banks responded to that quite swiftly and by increasing their policy rates quite rapidly. In 2023, we saw most central banks continue with this process of further tightening their monetary policy to bring down these inflationary pressures. And in turn, we also saw inflation starting to moderate and fall to much lower levels compared to what was seen by the end of 2022. Now, as, policy, as the policy environment became more restrictive, what stood out is really just how resilient the US economy was in the face of all that tightening. The US labor market in particular remained strong throughout 2023. And this was a feature we also saw in a number of other advanced economies, including here in Australia. Now, this was really important in the sense that it provided that much needed cushion to limit the impact on households from a lot, uh, a, a very large sized interest rate payments. And it was also important for corporate earnings in that it supported the short term outlook. Now, these factors were essentially aligned to support market sentiment in that you had the positives from receding inflation, you had reduced or fading concerns over a possible US recession in the short term, you had economic resilience, as well as there was a change in expectation that uh, the Fed was likely nearing the end of its policy tightening. All of these factors supported market sentiment and did contribute towards a strong performance in 2023, particularly for some asset classes such as equities. Now, there were also areas of concern, as you mentioned, starting with um, a few episodes of regional bank failures in the US, which, which added to some element of uncertainty. But we also had concerns around geopolitical tensions, which intensified through the second half of the year. And added to that, there were also concerns around the US debt ceiling negotiations and fiscal sustainability. Now, the impact from these uh, factors were relatively limited. And so looking at the overall performance, 2023 proved to be a strong year for financial markets. Looking at some of the major global asset classes, we saw that global equities produced quite strong positive returns in 2023. US tech stocks in particular performed very well during this period and contributed a significant share to the overall performance during the year. Comparatively, we saw Australian equities also produce positive returns, but they were not as large as global equities over this period. Looking at government bonds, government bonds produced moderate positive returns, and this was coming on the back of a year with very large negative returns, which was seen in 2022. And finally, the extent of policy tightening also meant that cash produced positive returns, which were quite comparable to returns produced by government bonds of this period. Yeah, very interesting for cash as well, which uh, many were saying cash is back as an asset class. Um, so on, on the sense of monetary poly policy, what is the market thinking as we as we look ahead? Now, monetary policy has uh, been aggressively tightened for almost two years now, depending on which country we're thinking about. And with most of the tightening done and inflation 
significantly down to levels which can now be compared to central bank targets. It does appear that uh, central banks are considering the suitability of further tightening, just given the extent of tightening that's been delivered. Now, most of these central banks have been on a rate pause for a few months now. But that is not to say that central banks are not uh, uh, that is not to say that central banks are deviating from their tightening stance. They have retained a tightening tilt, but we're also starting to see some changes come through. For example, an important change um, we observed in December was with the Federal Reserve's monetary policy announcement. Now, the Federal Reserve left their key policy rate unchanged in December, but their new economic projections indicate the possibility of um, the policy rate being cut more significantly in 2024. Now, as you would expect, this has really lifted market sentiment in the sense that it has supported hopes of potentially an earlier end to the Fed's tightening cycle. And we have seen a change in market expectations as indicated by the future Fed funds rate curve. But then again, if you look at other central banks, for example, the ECB or the Bank of England for that matter, they have also left their rates unchanged in December. However, they have been relatively more cautious in their signaling in that they have mentioned that they do see rates as being at restrictive levels for an extended period of time. That's very interesting, particularly the you know, little bit of divergence that you mentioned in, uh, uh, in some of the, the messaging that central banks are putting forward. Um, so as we look forward, um, what kind of risks and opportunities should uh, market participants be looking for? Certainly, I think 2024 is going to be uh, a year of both risks and opportunities. In terms of risks, I think one of the key risks to look out for is um, the extent to which inflation can remain sticky for longer. We did see that US CPI print for December uh, actually pick up. Um, that did surprise markets. Um, and there is, a, with energy prices being volatile and with geopolitical tensions continuing to play a role, that could certainly have an impact on the short term trajectory, which in turn will affect how soon and how swiftly central banks are able to exit their um, you know, tightening stance. I think that will be critical. I think another aspect related to it is um, the possibility that the impact from all of that tightening over the last two years can become quite significant and emerge in 2024. We haven't seen a very sharp pullback in demand so far. Um, and there's a chance that the economic resilience continues and we are safely in a territory where we do achieve a soft landing. But there is also the risk that the progressively high interest rates over the course of nearly two years does keep transmitting through the economy and induce uh, a, 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 a sharper reaction, particularly as household excess air savings and also that kind of buffer start to reduce quite meaningfully. So that will be a risk to look out for. And finally, speaking about opportunities, 2024 is a major election year for a lot of important economies. And what this means is that the fiscal spending or the stimulus that we typically see um, during such years could actually end up becoming uh, an important contributor to growth. Uh, and and that will be a positive for a number of economies. So there will be a lot of these elements to look out for. Fantastic. Plenty to think about for investors out there. Thank you for the look back for 2023 and some thoughts on the look forward as well for 2024. And we look forward to serving you uh, in the year ahead.